Alright, I got that. First of all, I'd actually be turned on the game in the first place. Thank you, Ringo. Alright, where is... This food bar. Okay, there we go. I got that. I don't know why it does that in the first place. Turn that to zero. Okay. All right, now we're cooking with gas. What's happening, everybody? It's your boy, Hardcorn, and we're back. It's been a while for sure, but I wanted to spend Christmas with my family and also the new year as well. But now, thanks to work getting settled down and things getting set up right, we're back to doing what we do best. And we're going to have some fun today with good old Miss Rinko and the... And the timing and crew. Uh-oh, she's angry at us. But yes, it's the new year, and we've got everybody over here now. So we're going to check out, you know, for the, for starting off, we're going to take out take a look at Rinko. She's the third friendship costume I have, because the first two are Soggy and um, Astaroth for them. She takes Shiranui's costume and looks absolutely fantastic with it. The real update his uh the real update for it is actually really fantastic. It makes Rinko look really good with it. Not so much not so very stiff afterwards because of it. But you get her regular colors and then and then I also have the custom blue color that I made. It is, it's a tough choice between like the lavender they chose the lavender and dark grape purple they chose for her. Or the blue one that I got for her. Because they actually work very well with it. We'll just start off with blue. And for the most part, we're just going to get down and farm the repeat event, which is good old treasure hunting in the cave. So let's get started. That's damage to protect people. I don't need that. I need critical rate of assist. Let's go mess around with good old Rinko. Baby girl shows us how it's done. Akiyama Rinko, Mairu! I mean, typically it's uh, not a very hard situation. I need to turn down the game slightly. It's really loud on my end. There we go. But how you doing, everybody? How's your Friday going? I haven't seen you guys in a while, so you guys gotta tell me what you've been up to. Because I know I'll tell you guys what I've been up to. As I farm the entire event itself. But how you doing there, Raptor? How's your Christmas and how's your New Year's been for the most part? Well, there, there, there's a good starting point. I was actually reading some stuff about uh, Pokemon earlier. Uh, yes, good old Scarlet and Violet released uh, in in November, and it was and it. You know, obviously it turned out to be a humongous buggy mess, and it was like absolutely rough on release. It looked like absolute shit. It looked like absolute shit, and like there were so many glitches in there, you could like... Everywhere you turn, you could just experience like day one glitches, like thus far. It was insane stuff. I absolutely love seeing that sort of stuff, and like everybody had like... There were always some sort of unique glitches happening in some sort of way, and you could never- I could never get enough of it. Especially there was one that was like a week after the game released, and you had like... The eyes were bulging out of the head of the player, and this looked like- it looked absolutely terrible, but, it, but for the most part it was making like the booba- Little like the booba face. I think I have that picture saved somewhere I posted onto Twitter or something like that. But frankly, I couldn't I couldn't really care too much about what the glitches were doing in the first place because they didn't really impact What my what I was mostly looking forward to was the new changes in terms of like Pokemon and for battles I've been messing around on Pokemon showdown and I was checking out that sort of stuff and uh I don't know like during the first few days of the game's release when they like gen 9 Gen 9 OU is always a very um, contentious area. Terrestrialization obviously was put under um, 
put under the microscope and people were debating whether or not it's like a totally busted thing they need to ban just like that and just like dynamax <clears throat> but they didn't end up banning it now um now annihilate is actually getting uh investigated for doubles ou which is actually pretty which is actually pretty nice because if you let like Annihilate just like get away with anything that it does in doubles because you can just get like mouse hole and use beat up and then it, like The game doesn't know what to do because now rage fist has 300 base power and then it gets up to 450 due to stab It'd be 600 with um Ghost Terra But even then it would it's still a really nuts move in the first place but I'm glad your holidays are pretty good over there Raptor Because I could obviously go on and on all about that sort of stuff. Because there's not much to say about the uh, the repeat event itself. I did a whole thing covering that when it happened. I think it was part of, it was part of the wood weapon challenge I was doing, as well. I think I, think I made a video about it. Oh wait, I don't need to bother with that. But for the most part, when they had the um. What, what is that thing called? The past and paradox mons. Like the past and paradox mons are like some of my favorites because what do they have? They have Iron Treads and Great Tusk. They're both divergent evolutions of, uh, of Dawn Fan. And I just think that's, in, that's really cool. Because it's like they they really sell the sort of sort of like uh, taking care of the generation two Pokemon that have gotten like barely anything in generations eight and nine. And obviously, if you're a generation one Pokemon, you're gonna get everything in the world handed to you, except if you're someone like Machamp. Machamp's really got to work for his stuff. What's generation ten's unit gonna be about? I don't know. This generation was um, terrestrialization and also a protosynthesis. Protosynthesis only applies to a few Pokemon, but it's a uh, it's a pretty healthy amount. I think it's a total of like there's what forty total um, paradox and there's a total of forty paradox and. Uh, future mons or what paradox and past mons or anything like that so protosynthesis is actually pretty stuff like that that's what's a, a neat concept that for the most part which i really like you can do pretty cool things with it we got evolution beyond evolution super moves go big type changes fusion i don't know about fusion fusion sounds like it's a very um contentious sort of content you know Because they're going to have very limited terms of fusion. Obviously, like your uh, your box legendaries are going to be able to fuse at some point. But I think they already did fusion in some sort of way with black and white, especially black and white too. Because Kyrium, uh, Reshiram, and Zekrom could fuse, and they would make Kyrium uh, R or Kyrium Z or whatever. I forget what the name of it is. But that's like their first really instance of fusion. Because I honestly don't have a clue about where they would go on that sort of thing. It's just absolutely nuts. Oh yeah, Generation 7 did that with uh, Lunala and uh, Lunala, Sologlio, and uh, I forget what the third legendary is. Where, you have to, where they fuse together and they make like, it's like not it's not Zorora or anything like that. Maybe it is. And I'm, I'm, I'm misremembering. But either way, they, they Pokemon has done fusion before, and they relegate it usually to extremely powerful things. It ate my input. Couldn't finish it off. I couldn't finish the combo. 
I don't know if that's a controller thing or if that's something else regarding like what they changed with Rinko. But yes, it has been a year since the Tifa, since that nice video of Tifa getting totally railed at the Italian Senate, and she became a honorary member with uh, how really great it was. You know, honestly, if it was anybody else who got, you know, totally getting slammed at the Italian Senate meeting, I don't think anybody would care. But as long as it's Tifa, everybody's like, yeah, that's okay. That's something, that's something I can get down with. Oh yeah, also, Ash just got beat by Misty, of all people, during like those, uh, the Go Home episodes of, um, uh, like, well, not the Go Home episodes, but the sort of finishing episodes of his, uh, retirement. Does that screen tearing appear to any of you guys? Because on my end, it starts, like, the screen tearing has started to appear. I don't know what the hell that is, because... Ever since the, like, the Unity update for this game, it's been doing that. I should get rid of Mugen Hoei. Because, god, it casts so slowly and I bet I could just use the Meteor for it. Yeah, it'd be a really great moment to use the Meteor. Like, I remember I was on VP last night, and I see, well, it was early this morning, and then I see that picture was, uh, what is it? Ash's Corpish gets totally destroyed again. Once again, he jobs just like he does in advanced battle. Let's change Rinko's moveset. You thought it was only you there, Kimura? It's like, I know, because, like, the Unity update absolutely fucked up some of the stuff, and it changes, like, the refresh rate of the game. So now my screen starts tearing way more than it usually does. Because it would usually... A screen tearing situation would happen, like, once every, like, two months. And it would only... And it would be very rare at that. Now it happens every time I open the game. No, Violet Slash needs two. Wind Slice needs three. I want the Meteor. I think I can get rid of this. No, that's just a flat damage boost. Mm. What would the legendaries of Generation X be about? I don't know. They only just released the information for, uh... They've only just released the newest game, but I wouldn't doubt they're already working on the next one in some capacity. Damn it. Come here. Come here. God, they have, they've, I think they, they just absolutely 100% realize just how broken Wind Slice is. They make it cast twice and do 40% more damage. How, how much more do you need? But what have they said in regards to like, where are they going to go after Ash's journey has ended? Like, what is there to do? I mean, effectively, there's they just got the same problems they're going to put on the new character. Though I haven't touched the anime since I was, like, in elementary school. No, I can't say that because I tried watching the X and Y anime when it was out. And honestly, I don't think I could have... I didn't get anything out of that like, that I could actually enjoy. But I don't know about you guys, but I'm absolutely hungry for some shrimp. 
Like, I really want to eat some, like, you know, I want to have, like, a nice big prawn and just chow down on it. Get some, like, cocktail sauce with some very fresh, uh, what, what is that called? Horseradish. Horseradish, very fresh hot cocktail sauce with some horseradish and just absolutely go to town on it. I want my sinuses burning and I want the taste of, uh, bottom feeders. Because my god, that is so delicious. In the past, I have complained about, like, having controller problems due to, like, stick drift on my old controller. So a little bit before Christmas, I went and got myself a new controller. Mm. I got the DualSense, the, the PlayStation 5 controller. And honestly, it's pretty good. I like the way it works a lot. It's better in some ways than my old in the, my old uh, Elite controller. For the most part, the actual, like, for one, it doesn't have stick drift. And two, it actually, like, it feels nice to hold for the most part. It feels nice in the hand when I'm playing something like, you know, messing around with, like, Game Boy games or whatever because of the way the D-pad is positioned on Sony products. All you had to do was just stay in one area. You could all die a peaceful death. But for the most part, the DualSense controller is actually like a very, you know, nice controller. It feels solid in the hand. It's got like, it doesn't have the rubber grip, uh, those rubber grip items that the Elite controller does. It just has a textured back. So it doesn't give that sort of like warm rubber sort of feel on the back of it. That I can really enjoy. Because I just really can't get behind, like, I couldn't get behind, like, the wet feeling the grips would have after a certain amount of time. And also the grips after, I think, like, three years started falling off on my Elite controller. This doesn't have to worry about it. Also, this is this may still be, like, a Generation 1 uh, DualSense controller, but at least they learned their lesson from their Generation 1 uh what is it? Generation 1 PS4 controllers where they had the rubber grips on the uh, the rubber grips on the control sticks themselves and those wore off I think like on the second year that I had mine. Like I wore the covers off completely. And then even on the Elite controller I had to wear, I had um, already replaced both of my um, control sticks. Well, also, I use them extremely heavily, so I had worn down the uh, grips off of them. This one I don't think will happen as quickly because it's made with, like, some sort of very hard, um... Not so much hard, but it's a... What do they call that? It's like textured... It's like a textured rubber seat... Textured rubber coating that has a sealant on the outside. So it won't get oil or water ingress. I mean, frankly, it's a solid controller. I've beaten like most of the games that I own. I just, I played, I'm obviously playing this and just like destroying everything. So it's not the controller right there. Oops. Oh wait, I meet here. The King Kong 2 is a great controller for non-drift. What about it, Kimura? What about the King Kong 2 that makes it such a, like, a nice controller that has no drift problems? Also, I think this... I'm pretty sure... Well, I, I never really use the wireless functionalities for controllers because I just want to keep them connected all the time. But how you doing there, Jermaine? How you been? You're, you're now a Micah main, Ollie. You got Micah now. Jermaine over here with his absolute love of fiery women. Hmm. 
But for the most part, guys, what have you been doing over the over the Christmas season? Because in my case, I've been watching. Uh, I spent a lot of time and I watched some anime with like my with the, with my cousins and my sister. And also, I've been watching some other stuff on my own as well. Because uh, I gave Chains we gave Chainsaw Man a chance. We were watching that weekly, but frankly, it, j it just fell off so much for me. I just couldn't get into it. Obviously, when people are talking about Chainsaw Man, they, they love them, them fat-ass Makama. She's got a dumpy that just don't quit. And even then, it was just like, you know, I don't I don't see much of the dumpy thing that's going on with her, but this the story is so slow, and I'm really bored on the most of the episodes. Well, also, other than that, I've been working. Isn't that great? You, you gotta do your fun adult jobs now. Just, you gotta work every day, and then you get to cherish your weekend for the most part. God, I, oh God, I love Violet Slash so much. Because it gets you out of those, uh, the ending. It gets you out of the, uh, recovery animation. For a lot of, of, of Brinko's skills. Which is why I praise it so much. Oh my lord, getting cornered. Hold on, after this mission, I'm gonna go look up something that was, uh, that I think Velody sent the other day. Because it was regarding, like, this tier list that, uh, it's some sort of, like, magazine in Japan that put out regarding this game. And I want to look over that real quick. Because they're, I think their S rank, because, it, like, when people were, when it got posted, everybody was, like, wondering about what their S rank choices were. You ain't got a job there, Raptor? Well, you gotta get a job somewhere. We all do at some point. And it sucks sometimes. It's terrible. There we go, LD player. <laughs> Let's see. They put... Hold on, I gotta, let me put that into my other browser. No, better yet, I'll post that into the chat so you can go check that out. That's their tier list that they made for it. I mean, it's not exactly the best sort of tier list, but it was something I was looking at earlier. Because their S ranks are Murasaki, Shiranui, Astaroth, Felicia, and Micah. Now when I made my tier list, I put Micah into S rank because she has like, she's the best feeling character in the game. Like everything feels so fluid with her outside of her basic attack string, and even then you don't have to use it that much. Which is something you can't really say about a lot of characters. So I can get the sort of S rank where they're going with it, but the sort of justification that they use for it is like, Grenade Launcher, Death from Above, Mato Flare, Mato Flame, Pile Flare, Explosive Rounds, and Carpet Bombing. Grenade Launcher is like one of the worst skills that she has, like, hands down, because it's a summon. And summons, like, have zero boost and don't scale off of, like, and scale off of almost nothing. Which is, like, extremely impressive that they would actually include it in there. Pile Flare is, at, is way too situational to be like good, but I guess you can use it as a buff thing. Because I think it counts as melee damage. But explosive rounds, carpet bombing. Death from above. Like, all those are really great skills. Mm -hmm. 
Oops, that's the wrong one. There we go. There you go, you gotta go farm Kessen. Over there in good old RPGX. Frankly, I, I never could really just get into RPGX. It's not even like a sort of, oh, it's not, it's in Japanese. And I, and I just would never enjoy it. Because it's like, what, what exactly does RPGX have besides, you know, no, wait. In terms of gameplay, just how is RPGX? Is it something that I can actually sit down and actually play for 12 hours like I want to do? Or do I have to sit there and start using a bunch of resources to do that? Because in RPGX, you know, the obvious goal in there is to go pick up hot girl units and see the great scenes that come about with them. And frankly, I just can't like, I just can't do anything about that. Because the RPGX viewer itself, you know, it it will it gets updated, uh, you know, a new card comes out, somebody in the community gets it and posts the information about it, and most importantly, the pictures that come from it. Those get posted and they get updated with the viewer, so I don't really feel like I need to play RPGX unless I really want to get into the collecting portion and, like, myself possessing that stuff, you know? Because I see no reason to do that. It's the same thing that I have with a Battle Arena. I don't want to play Battle Arena because it's a shitty game. And the viewer does, a, and the viewer does ex what I want to do with the game, and I can bypass, like, the worst part of it. Kyogi. Wow, Ringo, you just eliminated every single one of them. Well, more or less, speaking of uh, very sexual games, who here is playing, uh, you know, Nike? Because honestly, like, what do you even, what do you do in that game? I honestly have, like, never heard anything about, like, how you play that game in the first place. Because all I ever hear about that game is, it's, it's a similar situation to Azure Lane, is that I don't hear anything about what you do in the game itself. All I hear about is like, man, that that's a that was a very compelling story moment, <laughs> or that was a very uh, like that was that's a pretty lady right there. It's like, <laughs> just shooting duck. So it's a, it's effectively just like time crisis or something. Cuz it's like what? That doesn't really sound like a game I want to play. If I want to play like the sh a shoot and duck simulator, I'll go um I'll go play Time Crisis or I'll go play uh, Uncharted or something. Those are better those are better poop and shoots for sure. No, they're they're squat they're squat and shoots. That's what they are. I don't know. I'm just officially got grown tired of uh, gacha games as of late. Like, I don't want to play a game like that anymore. But yet, here I am playing uh, Action Time and in. But it's also for the fact that I have everything solved. Like, I can do anything. It's just really comforting to do it. But you're trying to figure out something since you got Emily and Mike on the same team, alongside the Queen.
fuck yeah, Riona, this game is sick as shit. It's great. It's great when you have everything maxed out and you can do anything you want. But the struggle is real at the low end. I think I've told you that before. Well, Jermaine, you can also do the sort of thing where it's like, uh, they, they instituted a new thing where you can have one setup, one, uh, three-person setup for, what's it called? Affinity effects, and another three setup for the main home screen. Like today, I have Shiranui. I have Shiranui, Rinko, and Asagi there at the front door, but... In reality, the effects for Affinity I have equipped are Astaroth, Ingrid, and Asagi. Ah. Shin and Isen. Kyogi. You got me on your second monitor while you grind chess. Kill him, babe. Absolutely kill him. Grind that ELO while you go listen to me beat up people. <coughs> the Rise of Eros is pretty fun if I enjoy turn-based RPGs. Saint Fox, how long has the game been out? How long has the game been out and how often do they do reruns? Because I, if I, what I want to know as like a new player is like, how easily can I um, gain power and get to the next power plateau to uh, start becoming not competitive, but at least uh, able to start accomplishing uh, efficient farming. Because these sort of games now aren't just like, oh, I'm going to play a game. It's a, they're a problem solving exercise for me. How can I effectively allocate my resources to? Um, uh, solve the problem, which is why I like, which is why I really fucking enjoy Nobunaga's Ambition because it's that that's the kind of game that I like. It's just resource management. Is it an alternate costume? Yes, it is. This is the uh, I'll show it in a second there, bud. But it's a uh, Shiranui's costume for Rinko, which takes like an assload of resources to get. Because you got Rinko's default costume here, looking great. God fucking damn it, the screen tearing every time. Oh, they actually added the gloss effect to her. That's nice. They added that on Asagi and they put it over here on Rinko now too. You got Pearlescent. But this is the alternate costume, the Phantom Hunter, because Shirinui's the Phantom and Rinko's the Hunter, so they put them together. Now you got, uh, I got great purple, and I got the blueberry. <clears throat> Something's wrong with my GPU drivers. I'm not sure if it's a GPU driver sort of thing, because Unity, the Unity engine updated, I think, just bef just after Thanksgiving, and it caused this game to start doing screen tearing. Well, it started to tear much more often than it used to. Like I said, I said earlier that it would tear like once every two months and it would happen like one time in that. Oh, in this stream so far in the last, it, we've been doing this for 30 minutes and I've gotten at least like eight, eight or nine. That may be like a GPU sort of thing I have to look at to change the whole thing of like, okay, it, it's, it's tearing, I need to solve that. Maybe it needs an update. But it never happened until I did it. Oops, I keep forgetting I don't have moving Hoa equipped. I mean, the thing is, it's only with this game. Like, I don't get screen tearing on anything else. No reruns yet, but the game is less than a year old. Hard to say about in terms of resource management, it's gotcha for characters who can make a big difference. So who I get can make a big difference. So it's a character-based game then. 
because games like that usually have a very big problem with um, if you don't acquire the character, you're not you're gonna have a very hard time on like you're gonna get crept really easily. It's so because it's like that's a, that's what Grand Blue Fantasy does really well is uh, you get crept really fucking hard if you don't have these certain characters and you can't accomplish things. You can accomplish certain tasks as a younger player with new characters that are obviously extremely strong, but you can't do it. But as an older character, you can accomplish new tasks because you have the resources, but as a new player, you can't accomplish the new tasks because you don't have the resources. Which is why I asked for reruns, because like this game unfortunately has a really big problem with making too many reruns and now you don't have anything to do for newer for for older players. But as a younger player, it's a really good time to come in there and like get really geared up so you can actually do something insane like, you know, this event gives like one of the best supporters in the game, which is Lilum. I'll show I'll show her off in a second. But that that supporter gives like at maximum value it gives 30% more damage to protect characters, and that's an element that has uh, one of the weakest sort of setup, one of the weakest supports uh, in the game. So any character that can take advantage of that is like automatically like jacked up like two points. It's great. But speaking of problems with other gacha games, uh, Time Ago Go. That it does it is a very sad situation of a game because uh, Time and Go Go was created by Grammary Games, the same company that makes this. It was supposed to release, you know, what is it? It was supposed to release bef the same time actually as Nike, but obviously, it would be like it's the same situation of like releasing your character, re releasing your character, releasing your movie like Star Wars up against releasing a. Releasing like your tiny indie film against Star Wars, you're gonna fucking lose. Put that on Rico. Yeah, we got good old Lilim over here. She's the one who drops from this event. Z protect type characters. You increase damage dealt by 30%. And then she has one of the best calls in the game and with a really great cooldown. 30% more damage, 30% defense buff, and a 30% slow. Like I couldn't ask for anything better. Like S tier stuff, and it puts it in a color that's like you know, fantastic. Sadly, Rinko can't take advantage of it, but oh well. Uh, let's see. Actually, we're fighting a lot of demons. Ooh, right now, perfect. Uh, I don't need uh, her. I can use someone else. Hmm. Where is it? Not Litva. Not Lit. Not that. Oh God. There she is. There's Laura. I no longer get the defense down, but I, I, as long as I have the ability to just do more critical damage, I'll be okay with it. Oh, that's right. I got I got distracted. I forgot to explain what anime I was watching earlier. <clears throat> but as of late, I think I've spent the last week watching um, Legend of the Galactic Heroes. That is that is a that's a fucking show right there. There are very few shows that I've actually sat down and watched that made me go like, God damn, that's incredible. What a grandiose and amazing show. I think the only other time that I've said that is when I played like Steins Gate. 
and then I watched the adaptation of Steins Gate. I never felt like, well, for the first thing is like, when I watched Steins Gate, I did, I did not expect, uh, yeah, that's it. When I watched like the adaptation for Steins Gate, I was honestly expecting something completely different. Like Steins Gate is, uh, I thought Steins Gate was going to be shonen, but I got a uh, sci-fi and character drama. That was 100% not what I was expecting at all. And frankly, I don't mind because that was fantastic. Like every, everybody should go play like, well, everybody should like watch the adaptation for Steins Gate. That was fantastic. I think there's like 24 or 26 episodes for like the entire adaptation that goes through to the good ending. But it also shows the bad ending as well. But all the twists, all the turns, I had never been spoiled on that series in the slightest. And I think that, that uh, the game itself released in like 2008 and the uh, anime was 2010. So I had gone 12 years without hearing a word about it. I just knew the name of it. And I was honestly very impressed. I can see, I, I know now why Kurisu drinks, um, I know why Kurisu drinks Dr. Pepper now. I know why they do that. And it's like, it's not just like, oh, it's haha, -ha, that's so funny. It's like, oh my God, it actually has a really important moment in the actual plot. Memes are fucking stupid. Hmm. But in Legacy of the Galactic Heroes, it's got the, I think the base show has like 110 episodes, so it's really, really long. I gotta sit down and watch like four or six episodes a night just to make any meaningful compre any meaningful um any meaningful progress. I'm only on like 70 something and I'm gonna watch some more of it today. But it's like one of the most compelling shows I've ever seen. Like I can't believe it. Like, you got Reinhard Lohengram and you got Yang Wenli. Those two guys are like fantastic. And to know that there's 40 more episodes that come after the initial show itself is like, it's it's honestly like, it's tiresome, but I'll, I'll probably watch those later. Is there a gallery mode for the enemies? Yes, there is. We'll go take a look at that right after this. Because it goes into detail, because the enemy, uh, the rogues gallery will show off like, they give a description of each of the enemies. And I think you can look at the bosses as well, because I know you're going to want to look at um, the two bosses we're facing. Thirty-six seconds. It's not bad. How much do I have? Thirteen seven. Okay. You just go over to collections. We go over to monsters. We got 111 of them. Because it has its very own collection of like, you know, we've got our lower rank demons, mid-tier bosses and such. Like, look at this. Oh, I'm very sad that this guy doesn't get like, done anything with him anymore. He's the size of a fucking house. And it's like, they do nothing with him. Also, look at, look at his legs. Look at those legs right there. He's got, he's got the absolute fucking thickness of this man. Hmm. Is this game always online? Yes. If you get disconnected from the internet, you will get, you can't play the game. Because it has to communicate with the servers to uh, update. We got Snake Lady, we got Kalia, both of them at the same time. Where is, there she is. We got Lilum over here, Succubus Lilum. You can't change their clothes or do anything with it. Which is very unfortunate, but you can read the description. You got Felicia though. Go don't miss Felicia. <clears throat> You'd want to start playing and try to collect all the monsters, but end of service is uh is scary. End of service is a scary situation indeed. Like I don't I understand where you're coming from on that. 
because it could happen at effectively any time because they've, they've effectively lost a lot of money on their last investment. But getting all 111 enemies isn't very hard because you can just play through the story and that's it. The only, the, um, like you'll find, I think, like 90% of all the enemies through the story. And then the rest are just like one offs for events. Like Boner Boy over there, that's an event. Psych is part of an event. Naga Warrior, that's part of an event too. Like most of these are just part of events. But he's got Godzilla legs from the modern movies. That's true. He's got to squeeze him good. <clears throat> and we got this, this sussy boy over here. Good old Tempest. The fact that they actually did... They, they, they actually did something I really liked with the time of VR thing, which is where they put Tempest 1, 2, and Chris Maton together. They actually made an extremely difficult fight because of it. And we got good old Ingrid over here. The savior of the planet. She will defeat racism single-handedly. God bless her. God bless her. I don't know what the hell they're going to do with Lena. Like she too is also a dark knight, but she uh, she ain't doing nothing. Really cool supporter, though. But yeah, we're just taking a look over here at the uh, enemy gallery since, you know, one person asked about it and I want to actually show it off for the most part. What does it actually include? I like this. This guy, they actually like, you know, the, the floor is right here, obviously, but they zoomed him on in so much that uh, he can't fit in here. Absolute fucking unit right there. He doesn't have a sheath for the sword. He's just got rocks. The thing. You saw that one over there on Twitter. It's like, fuck yeah. That's a, that's a, that tweet popped off. I didn't think it would, but it's like, because I posted that in like one of the servers and I thought, hey, that was funny. I'm going to put that on Twitter and everybody's like, oh my God, yes. Oh, Ingrid. Oh my God. Oh yeah. Like this, uh, it looks like the one robot from Robocop. Yeah. It looks like ED-209. I wouldn't doubt that's where they got the design from, but that is the rogues gallery, all 111 enemies. If you have any specific requests for those, you can, you know, message me about it. But I'll get back to farming this. No, I only realize it now. I need. I want to change the skin for Shosu. Because as much as I enjoy destroying everything in like one shot with it, it's like I want to give it a different color. See, the thing also about this game is like it has original enemy designs for the series. And the fact that it's like they never use them outside of like one part is like so saddening because it's like that's a, that's a wonderful mismanagement of your resources. But I mean, also, there's a thing about this game where you can actually tell uh, they have a roadmap for the sort of stuff that they're doing. Like the Murasaki weapon you can get out of the um, the reward, the renewal gacha for her. Like the renewal gacha you get for her right there is a uh, what is it? There's a new weapon that comes out of the renewal gacha that has actually been in the game for at least over a year. But they had, but they just didn't enable it yet for players to pick up. Ugh. They didn't enable it for players to pick up yet, so there's nothing to do with it. You could just look at it and like you can en enable the skin and like Unity and look at it for the most part. 
Did you post the Ingrid thing on Twitter because of the one meme about ending racism or was it something else? No, I, I had just thought of that like when I was um I was talking to John DeCurse about it. About Ingrid. And I thought, you know what? That would be so great. It's like, you know, I'm gonna say that, like Ingrid is gonna be the person to end racism. That's it. No. I was talking about how uh, brown anime women will bring the world will be able to bring the world together and end racism. And John's favorite character from Time and Ends is Ingrid. So I was like, yeah, Ingrid's gonna end uh, racism right then and there. And I just I posted that. There's like that was that's great. I love it. So I'm gonna post it. I'm gonna put that to Twitter, and everybody's like, oh my god, yes. That's so great. It probably also helps that I used um, a picture. I used a still from the uh, the o her OVA. But I think that the sediment, like people really, people usually share, is like, "Wow, Ingrid, you're so pretty. You should be able to lead all of us in a tribe against racism." But there's hardly any orcs. I think, that, yeah, we have like what two kinds of orcs in the game, in the base game itself. I forgot to change the weapon. Because typically I don't like to post uh, porn on my business account. Uh, post uh, contentious content because that's a lot easier to manage. Because if I really if I really want to post something like, you know, hardcore content, I, I would do it. But I don't like doing that because it hurts your it, it hurts your account. Where's butterfly? There it is. Whoosh! You mimidori. I love using Phantom Hunter, but I wanna change your clothes. Oh, it's the new year, that's right. Light, dark purple. If she was real and led that team to end racism, I'd 100% go with her. I don't see Ingrid as like the type of person to be a leader, but she was absolutely will strong arm. Um... No, Ingrid can lead, but she's not the type of person to lead like an entire movement. Like she's like middle. She'd be great at middle management. Oops, that's the wrong way. Because Ingrid would be, be the, absolutely the type that strong arms um, solutions into fruition. She'd be Malcolm X, but hot. That, that's how I look at it. Oh my god. What's the difference between Boss, Micah, and Astaroth, and how are they different from their playable counterparts? Alright, that takes that's actually really a lot of explaining I can do. Well for the most part. Uh, let's start let's just use Micah as an example because she's a really easy to understand. Their basic attack well, Micah retains her um, basic gunshot attacks, you know, throughout throughout the throughout uh, her play her playable process. But she can't, she can't do like the big fireball, the big consistent fireball, or everything's just named different. Obviously when you're a playable character, you have to have a much more expanded move set. When you're a boss character, your, uh, your move set gets much more limited. I think when you fight Micah as a boss, she has like five moves. And she cycles through them depending on your distance and level of aggression. Because you can check that out. You can actually check out like how they um, calculate enemy aggression inside the uh, files themselves. I think there's like a couple of files about that. Because I was looking at how um, 
When you fight against Rinko, it's really fucking bad, but when you use Rinko, it's really easy. And then you find out that, like, she just doesn't allow the player to get anywhere close to you, to you, to her, when you fight against her because of the way her slashes work. They're extremely high distance and they always paralyze. So, when, uh, when you have someone like... When you have someone like Micah, she has like five moves, and she has to cycle through them depending on distance. That's why you see Micah sometimes will run up to you and throw a grenade, jump backwards, and then shoot three fireballs. You can't do that as a regular Micah player because that's not programmed to be as done as a playable character. It's a similar situation to Astaroth. Uh, Astaroth can summon, I think, she has the, uh, what is it? The volcano mines that she can throw down. She can throw the volcano mines and like blow up the earth to do extreme amounts of damage and also area denial. You can't do that as as a player, but you can do something similar to it with Hellboys. Because if you gave that move to like an actual player, you'd be able to just like because what is it? That move scales to whatever the room is. So like the room we're in right now will just turn into something like she'll, she'll fill up the entire room with volcano mines and it'll be done. You'll be able to just knock that skill out every couple of moments. Like every other room, it's, every other wave will be able to be used. And also she, and also a notable difference with Astaroth as a playable and a boss, uh, you can set, the boss summons uh, Yuto, the little bunnies, and the player version summons Magma Worms. So it's like, Honestly, I'd love to summon Yuto rather than the Magma Worms because those Magma Worms sit still and the Yutos walk around. And also, who doesn't love a little cute bunny? Who doesn't love a cute little bunny that explodes for 8,000 damage and knocks your ass down? It would be like little little bunnies from little uh, rabbit from uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. It bites him in the neck. <laughs> Because it's like, what, how did that scene go? It's like, it's just a little, it's just a little bunny. There's nothing wrong with it. And then just bites him in the neck and he's like spraying blood like he's filled with jello or something. Like he just ran over a tub of strawberry jam. Wow. I never realized that. The moment when she gets actually... Wait, can I can't it. The moment when she actually puts the sword back in the sheath is when you can't continue the combo. Like, once it gets halfway through that sound effect, it's done. You can't... You have to start the combo over again. Because before... Before the update, you could... You could do that to like the very last possible second and really, really no problem. A cute and explosive bunny and not that sad episode from Powerpuff Girls. What episode is that? What episode do they have where the bunnies explode? <laughs> Unless that's getting confused with something else. I hope not. It's like, I, I don't want to see a, a rabbit get exploded. Because when, you, when, you, when I think of, like, you know, the rabbit explodes like that, what I think of, uh, I don't know if anybody remembers this. Remember those old, like, Joe cartoon things? It's like frog in a blender. And there's also like the Seth, there's, but more specifically, like there's the Seth uh, McFarlane Cavalcade, a cartoon comedy, that little thing of rejected uh, Family Guy skits. Uh, they have a, there's a skit in the uh, Family Guy cutaway gag. That's it. There's a, in that DVD, they have a, um, 
little cutaway gag where it's just two, where they put a puppy in a microwave, and you sit there and watch uh, the microwave count down for two and a half minutes until uh, the dog explodes from the microwave. It's not funny. It's just insanely gross and morbid. And it, you sit there and watch the entire two and a half minutes it sits there in the microwave. Terrible. So one of the Powerpuff Girls made a Powerpuff Girl named Bunny, and she was oh that's right that's what that's the one where they made the the chem they mess around with the professor's chemical X storage, and they try to recreate the they try to recreate them so they could actually have like a sister or something. And then Bunny sacrifices herself at the end so they could save a Townsville. When you said bunny, I couldn't remember who that was at first. But then when you said like the Powerpuff Girls made her, I remember exactly what that was. But now that you mentioned about the Powerpuff Girls, I only now I wonder like what happened to the uh, remake that they did, like the 2016 reboot. What what came of that? Because I've seen a couple of the episodes for it, and it's like you know, I don't care about it because it's like it's it's not very good in the first place. So I had no reason to care. No, it wasn't very good from the episodes that I saw, so I just stopped watching it. But eventually, I started hearing about how like the remake had like one of the writers had like their own little self insert that they put into the show. And that little self-insert boy is like a really big fan of uh, Blossom. So they uh, they have a whole bunch of episodes where that writer for that episode, the writer for that episode uh, would insert his little uh, character in various situations so they could get close to Blossom. So it, And it's like every one of those episodes is like fanfic uh, fever dreams and shit like that. Where he's the hero who saves Blossom and Blossom loves him. Like it's the absolute most like schizophrenic shit I've seen in a while. Like this dude is absolutely crazy. <laughs> and the thing is nobody noticed it either for like the longest time because nobody's watching the show. I wouldn't be surprised if he got kicked off the show at some point but also like he, I wouldn't be surprised if he got kicked off the show and uh, the show was canceled after a certain point. Yeah, we're drinking soda or beer. No, it's soda today. I've got to work tomorrow, so I can't get super drunk. Because when I go watch uh, Legacy of the Gla Legend of the Galactic Heroes, I'll go have my beer. Did I play Sonic Frontiers or Ragnarok? I did not play Frontiers because over the holidays it was very expensive for me and I had to control some finances. So I've yet to pick up Frontiers myself. Which is unfortunate because I want to play Frontiers at some point. I want to play Frontiers here at least. Here on stream because that's that's good, that's going to be fun. Because I, I every gameplay I've seen for Sonic Frontiers is like... It's like everything that I want out of this out of the Sonic series. It's fun. I don't have a PS5 though, so I can't play Ragnarok. Get 
but I had a friend who I have a friend who has the PS5 and he showed me some gameplay of uh like he streamed for me like uh, what what these do what you do in uh, Ragnarok and it's like it's it's pretty cool but it's not like for one it's not the God of War that I remember because the the God of War that I remember tried to ape off of the whole thing of like de the Devil May Cry gameplay but uh, simplified and in a Greek setting this is like the Last of Us but God of War. But it just goes to show how times have changed. It's also for the PS4. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought it was like PS5 exclusive. Because I would think it would be like PS5 exclusive since they were really like gung ho about the graphics and how it's like, you know, so it's next gen stuff. Oh, you dickhead. No one really bought the PS5 and they want to sell the game. Because honestly, I can't remember, like... Because here's the thing. The PS5 has actually been released for three years at this point. But since, like, the... Since the PlayStation 5 shortages in, like, late 2019... And the, uh, you know, coronavirus running rampant over, uh running rampant over the, you know, the whole world for almost two years. It's, uh... It's tough to remember that the PS5 is almost three. I mean, I need to get, I need to get PCSX2 set up so I can actually go play God of War uh, on stream. Because I've always had trouble emulating that game in the first place, and it always has like massive slowdowns. I need to mess around with its settings to actually make it work. Because that's a, that's a game that like I know I'll have a really good time with. And everybody, everybody, everybody loves Kratos. Even the people who at the time were naysayers of him, now they like them. They like Kratos. Dead Space remakes a uh, oh hey, you're not dead. Dead Space remake is next gen and the God of War I'm talking about the first three games and the two PSP games and Ascension. Which one is Ascension? That's one I know I've forgotten about because I played the PS. Oh cool, we finished the event. I know I played the um, I know I played Chains of Olympus, which is the uh, First PSP game. But you know, it's also... Re but but the thing is, like, they're doing remakes and everything like that. Now. But, but the Dead Space remake and obviously, like, the continuation of the God of War series. Dead Space isn't even that old now. Well, it doesn't feel old. Because when you think about it, uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 obviously got its remake last year. That released... That released and that's said and done because uh, Modern Warfare 2 released in 2009 and they and it's uh, so it's 13 years old at this point, which is something to take in consideration. It's like you know you wouldn't think it's like it's that old, but it's like it is. I remember very vividly uh, when I was in middle school and Modern Warfare 2 came out and uh, I was just turned 13 years old. And some of the kids stayed home from school because they wanted to get like first or second prestige or anything like that. Try to get ahead of the curve. And then I turned and I had my 26th birthday the last year. 
and uh, that's when the Modern Warfare 2 remake came out. So it's 13 years to the date, and it's like I fucking can't believe it. I'm, I'm starting to feel old. I wouldn't feel so old if the fact I didn't want to be so money hungry about that shit. I can only imagine how people who played System Shock 2 feel. Because that game came out in like 1994, and it's they're getting a remake finally that's going to release this year, so that's 28 years. I'd be, 20, I'd be 29, actually. Did you already on your rice fields farm? Well, we just finished up our farm here on this one. That was a nice, simple one, because Rinko knows how to fucking do it. And she kills the mission in, like, 30 to 50 seconds. Well, I could have farmed less. But I always love clearing these boxes, because it's the, be it's the best way to get resources. Without having to do... The farming mission 20 million times. Chains of Olympus and Ghost of Sparta got PS3 ports. I had never had a PS3, so I never got myself to play um, the. Mm. I never got to play the collection, and I never got to play 3. So I don't exactly know what 3 changes or what happens. But the fact the PSP games got uh, ports is a. Uh, I wouldn't think it would be that crazy because it's a first party Sony game, so I could fig so I figure, like, you know, they're gonna be able to uh, sort that out and actually make it playable on the PlayStation. Like, it's a, it's a first party Sony title, they're not gonna, like, make it run like shit on their own system. God of War 3 got a PS4 port. I mean, I guess I could play it at some point, but I don't know. I haven't touched my PS4 in the last uh, three years. Because the last time I actually sat down and used it was to go play Bloodborne for the very last time. Maybe one day I could sit down and like play. I'll see what happens in October when we go try to do spooky games. Cause Bloodborne is like, I know Bloodborne well enough to we can I can play that again. It's not going to be so goddamn stressful. But speaking of God of War, though, the thing is like. I think that, like there is some sort of meme going around with it. It's like I forget, not, not a trace. That's his son. It's the um, I don't know. I don't think his name is Fenry or anything like that. It's the guy where he you fight. They they fight on some sort of fucking rock or whatever. But some some guy apparently like put the music to Freebird, but the Freebird, the song Freebird, over the fight between those two guys, and it's like, yeah, that's that's good shit right there. It's very cinematic, just like uh, the final battle between Solidus, between um, Liquid Ocelot and Old Snake in Metal Gear Solid 4. And by the way, there are no game. There is no games after Metal Gear Solid 4. The series ended fucking there. There's no, there's no reason to go anywhere with it. Well, as much as I really enjoy Metal Gear Solid 5, it's it's just like it's a, it's effectively a what what's that what's that series called? Um It's the one Sam Fisher is in. Whatever it is. It's it's that kind of game. It's a sneaking game with just a It's a sneaking game with a Metal Gear coat of paint. It's 
even the first two God of War games got ported to the PSP. That I find hard to believe because... The PSP version of Chains of Olympus and it goes to Sparta, that, that game that already had problems inside it to keep to make it run at a consistent frame rate. And then you have God of War 1 and 2, which are like much more demanding. They put that on there. Like the they, the first Hydra fight over there in like God of War 1 would bring the goddamn game to its knees. It brought it to its knees normally on the PS2. Let's mess around in time of VR though. Mysterious film. Ooh, I like that. Anything cool with that? Ooh, yeah, we'll use this. And I need... She's on there. I need Tokiko back. I don't know, God of War is an interesting series in that respect. It stays very... It stayed hidden for years and years. Now, it obviously had its peak. It had a valley for a while where they ported it to keep everybody's, you know... It made it accessible to play on all their systems. And then they take... And then they just come back with like two fucking games that sell the sun and the moon and shoot for the stars and then they're back in the saddle. As much as people like to shit on cinematic games, uh, people really enjoy it. Because I mean, there's nothing wrong with like a cinematic experience. I have no idea why people sit there and praise I, no, I can't understand the praise for Metal Gear Solid, yet you will, uh, let's see, the, the praise for Metal Gear Solid, but you uh, chastise something like, oh, but you chastise something like The Last of Us, which effectively does the same shit. Oh, come on. Give give me the points. The loop doesn't do anything for me besides giving me awful bonuses. But yeah, I've got the time of VR is a very crappy experience to say the least. Yeah, Rinko, that god is that is insane. But the reason I want Tokiko is because I can give it 100% on-demand crits, and it's effectively like activating a Kauru for eight seconds. Because my other my Kauru is already on Murasaki, and thanks to that uh, infinite crit system, it also makes Murasaki's defense down hit even harder. And the Murasaki can go in there and hit for like 500,000 damage criticals with every swing of her axe. Because those criticals apply to everybody. Because the debuff is uh, global instead of local. And Rinko just takes really good advantage of it because she because of Violet Slash's uh, critical damage boost. I think that used to... That, I think that got nerfed or something because I think I would uh, I honestly think that used to be 80% for seven seconds 
which lasts just as long as Tokiko's buff, debuff. So it's like, hmm, I, th I think they stealthily nerfed it. Or I don't know. To juice ourselves. I wouldn't know. I'd have to go. I didn't do the thing that Bello D does where he has the... What is it? Records the changes. No, he does that with the characters. He doesn't do them with the characters. Five hundred and forty eight thousand damage. I mean, Rico's not exactly very good for this uh, sort of thing because. She's insane at bursting, but she's not very good at actually, like, lengthy fights. Because if you're not doing 20 bajillion damage at the very start of the battle, it's just not going to work. Because, like, Rinko's already been hurt substantially. She's at a quarter health. So I've, uh, I've got to switch to somebody else. So who would be better fit for this? Well, more or less, who's good enough in green where I can actually switch the stuff around and it'll, it'll work? I know. We need Micah. Because she doesn't have to worry about that so much. That's right, she's still human, so she can do that. To Kiko. And we'll have. Let's see, Misaki Akane. Tokiko in the front, so it does more damage. There you go, Mysterious Gyaru, the package weapon. Now the package one you can get. Take the take the stupid fucking mask off right there because it looks so bad. Hate it. It's terrible. <laughs> Alright, that's it. We need to get the stuff off of Rinko. Because I need higher base damage. I think like, all she has to do is just like sit there and blow them up. Alright, works for me. Oh, that's right. Ruthless Incendiary Carpet. Alright, there we go. Oh, that's attack buff. Damn it. I don't want to use those. Let's see. That's adds damage up and ultimate up. Okay. Bleed by. Look at that. Lovely. Oh, God, that's great. Look at that. She just sat there 10 seconds. 10 whole seconds. If she ever gets hit with skill down, it's gonna be the most, it's like the most destructive thing in the fucking world. Let's go to 18, where it actually really matters what kind of debuff we get. Oh, that's right, I have attack up. That's why it was so easy. But let's try it, because we need to, we need the meat behind us. Good old Micah, thicker than a snicker, because she out, she out here taking meat snickers like nobody's business. Alright, ultimate damage down. Perfect. If we don't have skill damage down, we're, we're okay with that. Three hundred thirty-two thousand damage. Nice. 20 seconds. That's still pretty good. 
El Perro de Kurenai. I'll never understand how they have the resources to get them to like 87. That is so ins that's so much. I can't I can't be doing that shit, man. Sadly, these robots can't be slowed, which is the worst part because it makes lining up Micah's shots really easy. Supporter I think that supporter skill 15% chance to increase supporter school skill cooldown time. That is so rough. Oh god. Oh my god. Oh, I killed Murasaki. Not good. Get him, Sora. Good girl. Look at that. Look at that. We survived. Yeah, we survived, but uh, Murasaki did it. Now, now we can't. Now I can't accomplish any other floors. I think that was with buffs too. Look at that. We got a crystal fragment for our troubles. I got thirty of those pieces of shit. And of course, we got a professional hackers out here. It's like, yeah, are, are you really doing that with a level 39 out there? Come on now. That's not, that's not, that's just not true. I'm more inclined to believe the level 83 Emily than I am to be a level 39, uh, what's her face? A level 39 Nagi. Oh my, oh my goodness, is that an epic 2B reference with the blindfold? <laughs> In blue? I, I, I can't, yeah, I can't believe any of this shit. It's like, nah. What, what a bunch of hooey. Volt web, volt sword, chain. I wonder what Noah. I, I do wonder how if they're able to complete this with Noah. Because I think no, Robert. Robert's the big punch, so I think this what it heals off of this, and Amanda does something else. I forget. Hmm. If you're able to like clear it with Noah that quickly, I'm very impressed. I just hope it's not a hacker. But it's expensive just to ascend one character in the first place. Oh yeah, I think it costs, like when I got Asagi to 83, it's a, I think to ascend Asagi to 83, it costs like 3 million. Fiscally, like, you know, fiscally it stops becoming a problem, but doing it in the first place is just so extremely expensive. Oh, it's a, that's a, it's a million dollars effectively every time. It's like, I already ascended Asagi one time, and it's like, this, like, the actual gold cost doesn't matter, because I have, like, millions upon millions. It's these that is, like, so, is so painful. Like, the, the pride rock over here, like, I've never seen one of those drops, so you have to buy them, and they cost, like, 10,000 apiece. And, ten, and just for 10 of these is, like, that, that is a nightmare upon itself. Ugh. I just cannot. I want to get her to 87, but it's like, man. 
I don't I don't have the I don't have the juice in myself to do that. Maybe one day. What is this supposed to be? What is the coming soon feature? Is that like the groups thing that they have in gr in Girls Frontline or whatever? Uh, let's see, we'll go to 15? No. We'll go to like 12. We gotta swap out Murasaki, so I need somebody who can heal themselves really well. There you go, Shirin. You can do that. No, because... Oh, that's right, you can use red, which is a color nobody's using right now. And look at that, I've already got it set up. No, that's that's for playable Shiranui. I need um, AI Shiranui. Kurisuma to blessing. Um... No, Laura's okay with that. Fuck it, we'll just give her Spika. Okay. So Getsu and Shinsoku, okay. Sora can heal herself. We'll take those off because we don't need it. You cheated in this game once during the first summer event back when it first arrived and you play the game fair because you were suspended. How long is the suspension? Because every time they update the game they obviously they show off their like their bands. But oh god, skill damage down, go fuck yourself, come on. But every time that they show the game updating, it's like they show off uh, who got banned and what happened. So I imagine like, what exactly happens? Like how does that? How long does that last? Oh gosh, she's gonna damn near die. some health I gotta be more I have to be more um, precarious about my positioning I don't know if I were ever to use cheats it would probably just be for speed hacks and stuff because all that does is just increase the farming it doesn't change any sort of like numerical values on the characters themselves especially Oops, that was a bad idea. Just I saw him walking and I did nothing about it. Look at that. 28,000 damage. Yo there, Masher. How you doing? We're out here just messing around with time of VR because I did not. I don't know. I did not stream when uh, the mo the mode itself came out, and after having played this uh, mode for a while, I've got to. I like the mode. I really wish that I'm so fucking tired of seeing that goddamn skill damage down icon. It makes the fight way harder than it needs to be. It's not even a fun skill damage down. It knocks like 70% of your goddamn damage off. But a time of VR, it's a very interesting game mode because it's really... When you fight the robots, they're, you know, the robots themselves, they show off that I, I was very excited to fight them. Then they actually show off the debuffs you have to deal with when you fight them. They're effectively just anti-fun methods. Like, even then, like, what makes it so bad is also they have a thing like... What 
Does it, do they have the, the most anti- Oh my god, they, what, what hurt her? What did that? Great, now Micah died. I don't even know what hurt her. No, I probably, I could probably figure out what hurt her. This is, a, this is another thing about it. It's like she probably got shot by um, one of those uh, robot guards and I wasn't paying attention because I'm talking to you guys. Like she effectively got hit twice and it's like, look at that, she's a million miles away, like how you should be playing Micah and then she just gets like shot to death like a goddamn dog. Ingrid, it's your turn, honey. We're gonna end racism. We're gonna end racism the right way. Actually, no, we're not gonna use this because I wanna stay as far away as possible from these assholes. Uh, no, she's blue. We're, we can't do that. Ingrid, you don't need that. I would've gotten Ingrid's friend costume, but it's like, nah, Rinko deserves it first. We'll get Autumn Knight. Tamade. Kyo no Seiji. No, not ranged. Oh, perfect. Major. Major actually having a use outside of uh, Arena now. My plus five Major. Use Anrose. It's actually really nice and for longevity. We'll change that out for... Um... Hmm... Well, I, can't, I can't use that. Oh, we're not using Anrose. There we go, you sure Yuki. There we go. We'll actually have a use for evil attack frequency. Oh, there we go, I like that. It's actually pretty nice. Uh, blinking Ember, that's self speed. I don't want to double dash with Ingrid because she has to get too close. There we go. Piercing. She'll be able to heal the next time. <clears throat> oh, I, I didn't even see that. The screen showed up and I said I was suspended for one month. And then I went to the Grimmery's help desk and told them I wouldn't cheat and they unsuspended me and I played the game fair ever since. I'm honestly impressed. They actually sat down and listened to the players. Bro, what is with the skill damage down? Every time. No! Oh, damn it. I need manual control of Ingrid for this one. I hate the skill damage down so much. It hurts Ingrid so very, very badly. A character who's designed to do as much damage as possible now can't do as much damage as fucking possible. Enjoying the updates aside from VR, it's like... I can't say I've, I've enjoyed every update so far because... Uh, the Rinka, not Rinka, the Murasaki Renewal, it's like, the Murasaki Renewal is a very, um, big hit to, like, how Murasaki looks as a character, and it wasn't very good. It's not like Rinka, where it actually really helps out some of her, uh, other features. Activate it. <laughs> well, that's okay. 
It said 237 right there, and then it just pops. Both of them are dead. Lone survivor Ingrid. Great. That's, that's fantastic. All right, let's go back to step 10. Oh, Sora, I'm sorry you had to do... I'm sorry you had to get done in like that. All right, we'll try to... We'll try to use somebody else. But it's really hard because everybody... All the characters that have really good healing are like... Are like 75. And we'll use Rin. Rin is a... Uh, she can do that because she has... Where is it? There's the stuff. Give all the stuff from Murasaki to her. Ah, yeah, hello there, postman. How you doing? We're just messing around in time of VR mode. Just talking about how the various updates with the game and all that. But in terms of, uh, let's see. The New Year's one we had. Uh, let's see, the New Year's event is not very good because they made an entirely new model obviously for the year of the, of the bull and the year of the cow and what do they do this what do they do for the year of the rabbit this year they had um they made cow have rabbit ears which is which is kind of funny in, in its own respect but it's like oh i wish they made like an actual fighting rabbit we could do <laughs> or we have like the big rabbit we could actually fight and that would be nice and fun <laughs> I'm sure I'm looking for, um, you know. I wish they would do that, because that's an actually fun idea. Uh, let's see. Melee up. Spin. She can heal herself this way. Oh, I have to go get it off a Nagi. Actually. Actu actually, hey, Nagi. Oh shit, that's right, we're sharing. They're, they're sharing because they're good girls. Uh, this is blue. Uh, damn it. That's the one thing about with these characters who share weapons. It's like you really can't. You gotta like swap all the goddamn time. Eh, I'll give you one of these. No way, I can't give you that because it uh, separates it. But a good morning to you, Postman. I'm glad you had a good sleep and getting ready for work. I gotta go to work tomorrow as well. It's a Saturday, so it's always extremely busy. Oh, Sora, I'm sorry I had to see you die that way. You, did, you didn't deserve that. It's like, it's only the 12th floor too, so it's like, we could've, we could've won. We could've had him, babe. We could've had him. Mmm. No, Rin has that. If I need someone with direct... These dies don't have any speed. They... Yeah, Sakura. So is Sakura good for that? Mm. Oh, wait. That's right. We can play with Blue Ingrid now because... Sora died. So we can get Reina. Get Arabella Glukshan. Hold on a second. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make a strategy because all my fucking characters are dead. <laughs> hmm. I can't. That's machines up. It's cooldown adjustments. Where is Mi there, there she is. There's there's Fumana Mane. It blows the fuck out of machines. She's a fucking machine. That's what she is. Get the skill. Get dark flame. My my great flame. Oh flame. There we go. The lady who ends racism. That, that, is, that is what I posted. Ingrid is going to end racism, everybody. She's going to lead us in a triad against uh, everything about that. I did not expect that tweet to do fucking well. I just thought it was funny. It's like that ep It's like that one that I posted about, like, it's Rinko's birthday. And, it, and I look back on it, it has, like, a thousand. I don't know what the fuck happened, but I guess people really like Rinko for some reason. Well, I don't know. I remember one time last year that I did. I went on like a two and a half hour triad about why I like Rinko. It's one of my most favorite moments of streaming this this game itself. Hmm, Shizuru is too much of a liability because she's too slow. 
If anything, I'll have to use Yukikaze. Um, take that off of Micah. It'd be pretty cool if the rabbit we fought was uh, voiced by Hugh Jackman. Fuck yeah, it would be. It'd be great. But I think uh, Hugh Jackman's a little bit out of this game's budget. <laughs> and more or less, if Hugh Jackman was in the game, uh, everybody would hear about it. Everybody would be looking like, how, to, how the fuck do I play Timonins now? I can't see that in there. Hold on. I'm, what does that say? Oh, that, that's more than the cheating, okay. I was surprised too, but I was only suspended for two hours because I read on to see who was suspended and I was on there. So I got depressed for one hour and then the next hour I thought to contact them. I'm, well, see, there you go. I'm just glad they actually sat down and listened for the most part. Most companies wouldn't even give you, most companies wouldn't even give the time of day to cheaters and yet they actually sat down and did that. <clears throat> But thank you, Postman. It's like, yes, we're coming back with content and we're doing things. We're mostly, but for the most part, we're having fun. And that's what it's all about. Hmm. Alright. She doesn't need any sort of boost because this weapon's stupid. Uh, Ingrid. We need that. We need that for sure. Uh, this is level 10 and I still have to mess around with it. I need to pick up the New Year skins before they go away. I think it's next week because uh, those are those are always really great. Let's see. I can't do anything like that. She already activated the disarm. There you go, stay in the corner, don't go anywhere. Look at that, great. Good job, Ingrid, that's how it's done. Don't fail me now. Ooh, attack down. Attack this dickhead. Oh, come, come back, come back. Hit, hit him into the ball. Awesome, he's in the corner. Really slow, but it's still really fun to use. It better be a reference to the movie The Rise of the Guardians, where he voiced the Easter Bunny. Rise of the Guardians sounds familiar. It's not because it's like I, I have heard of the Rise of the Guardians somewhere. I think I saw a commercial for, on TV for that a long time ago, but I did not realize it's like Hugh Jackman is in there. Is your gems ready for the bunny suit discount? I don't think I need to be ready for the bunny suit discount because I already have like, I think I have all of them. <laughs> no, I don't, I know I don't have all of them because they don't have Micahs. See, there you go. See, now I'm ready for it. I have the gem. Oh god. I have the gems and I'm ready to go pick up my goods. Cause I was like, I'm pretty sure I have all of them. Oh, that's right. Yukikaze has one. Oh god. Oh my lord. Oh, Ingrid, no, you got smacked. God damn it. Oh. Is that the movie where Jack Frost came from? No, that's the Santa Claus 3. Which is effectively a Devil May Cry 3, the movie. But it's a children's comedy. God damn it. I, I fucked up right there. I wasn't paying attention and got her killed. Oh, but tomorrow is Sakura's birthday. Oh, okay. That's a... I guess we can all go out and appreciate Sakura now. Uh, next... There you go. There's Sakura. How you doing, Sakura? You, you want to get used today like you do in the movies? Great, I'm gonna- we're gonna give a beating of a lifetime to this guy. You're gonna get the beating of a lifetime from this dickhead. In more ways than one. 
No, she's not ranged. I'm so sad you can't apply two of the same supporters at the... Two of the same kind of supporters at the same time. At least when she's it's humans, you can do something like that. Omakasete. Oh, that's right. There's, um... And that's, okay, that's enough out of you girls front line. You're, you're nice, but we're gonna listen to something else now. There we go. I got 22 characters and I only like... Yeah, I got 20, I have 23 characters in this and I only like using about 11 of them. In a situation like this, now I gotta really like start squeezing this stuff out of there. Cause I know what, I know what to do with Sakura. Like these two I don't have to worry about. I suppose I could get rid of Nether Dive and replace it with Spin. I have to get rid of Claw. Great. Jack Frost is the white hair anime dude that gets paired with Elsa from Frozen. Rise of the Guardians is a 3D animated movie by DreamWorks. Oh, I didn't I didn't know that. Oh, that's right, I wanted to get Micah take the stuff off of hers and then do that. Because Sakura is gonna need all the help she can get. See, I don't pay. I don't really pay attention to a lot of newer movies unless someone's really, unless it really pops off. Like what Raptor said right there, "Puss in Boots: The Last Wish." I saw the first Puss in Boots movie. That thing. I was genuinely surprised at how fucking good that actually was. And then we have Puss in Boots: The Last Wish, and it's actually people are like, you know, this ain't bad. It's not terrible. In fact, it's kind of fun. Which I really appreciate because it's like, you know, I think there's a clip that I saw um, yesterday about Puss in Boots The Last Wish and it's like, it's, it's, some pretty, it's some real Devil May Cry shit for sure because like good old Puss in Boots over there is just like fucking around and messing with everything and he's like slick as can be like Dante and like when he's having, when, De when the Devil May Cry office is being assaulted by him. Um, is being assaulted by uh, the demons. I just think that's like, oh, that's, that's awesome. Oh, that's right. I have yet to see the movie myself, but I know probably in like the near. Well, no, I'm I'm, I'm really on a kick about um, a legacy of the Galactic Hero, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna watch it yet. I watched the Santa Claus movie and show. Except for the third movie. There's, there's a show. Does it actually have Tim Allen in it? <laughs> Is everything Devil May Cry to you? Well, the, the, here's the thing with Devil May Cry. It's just the story of the red Oni and the blue Oni, but put on a much grandiose and larger scale, but and, um, on a much more grandiose scale and in English. And in English which really helps my understanding of it. Well, look at that, Sakura. You actually did a good job for once. Probably also really helps that, like, see, I got a one of those. And earlier I got a five. So, like, what's that supposed to be? Oh, shit. How you doing there, Draven? I haven't seen you in forever, but I've been uh, I've been out and about. I've been I've been working a lot, and also I went to see my family for uh, Christmas. And of course, when you see the family, you always gotta spend a lot of time with them. Oh my god. 
got it. Thirteen thousand healing. Holy shit, Sakura. That is on that is the sort of scaling that's on the same level as Murasaki. Holy shit. I knew that skill got buffed, but I didn't think it got that kind of a buff. Yeah, time of verse. You, you you told us about the show. You gotta tell us about like what happened in that show. Because that is honestly like pretty fucking nuts that the, that they had the Santa Claus show. I know there's three movies, but it's like there's a show. You never played Devil May Cry, but you did pay it, play a Bayonetta. I have played both, and uh, let me tell you, you should you should play Devil May Cry. If you appreciate the way things work in Bayonetta, you will like Devil May Cry. The only like the only uh well not Devil May Cry the only um Bayonetta game I've ever played is one because I I own an Xbox 360 so like when that game came out and I never bought a Wii U and I don't have a Switch so it's uh it's a bit difficult for me to play the game and I don't want to fuck around with the emulator just yet because I did that for Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and it just kept crashing. You know what, I actually have Bayonetta. Maybe one day I could actually go sit there and, uh... No, I, I need to get some practice first, so I can actually... I have to practice it again so I can play it on stream. But even I'm bad at Bayonetta, I'm trying to get the second and third on Switch. Along with Splatoon 3. I never played, um... Uh, I can't say much about 2 and 3, but I, uh, with, if it follows the same situations as 1 in terms of combat, and I know they got the uh, level the level upgrades inside uh, from one to two was actually very substantial. It actually made it a very very uh, very nice complex game that I like. Now I would have liked to play it, but it's also I'd have to have bought a Wii U, and that turned me off on it forever. But I hear from the people who actually you know bought a Wii U and played it, they liked it a lot. the show about Tim Allen getting replaced by a female Santa Claus. Is that it? Isn't that- that's like the plot of one of the movies. You know, every time someone mentions Christmas stuff, it's like, I always think of the movie The Polar Express. Because, you know, The Polar Express, it's obviously one of those quintessential modern Christmas movies. But here's the thing about the uh, the fucking the Polar Express. Have you guys ever read the book for the Polar Express? Because that book that book was like everywhere in like the early 2000s, and I mean fucking everywhere. Like I found that in like my first grade class. And, like I, like all throughout elementary school, I saw it in every single one of my teachers' rooms. I guess like the, the people who like made who wrote the book, they really got like the best deal ever and had every person buy it. You know, Yukikaze died. I don't know, I wonder why. Yeah, the Polar Express is a book in the first place. It's a very, uh, it's a very short book. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a very short picture book with a uh, little text, with little text captions below what's going on, and it tells a very simple story. Obviously, it's about the fucking train that takes you to the North Pole, so you can go see Santa Claus and you know, talk about Christmas. I have no idea where they got that believe in Santa shit from, because it's like that's not what that, that, they, it, he didn't say that. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't say. Yeah, 
Yuki Kaze is dead. Even on, like, I have no, why is the AI always so bad at using characters like Yuki Kaze? Alboro is just so good at time of VR. She's like one of the best characters for it because her slow is so fucking strong. If you can pair her with Asagi, you can essentially get permanent slow and Murasaki. Not with the fucking robots, though. They're really shitty about that. Felicia, be a good girl and beat him up. She's assist, so I can't do that. Hmm. Then we're gonna use beginner because it's a good question. Oh, I forgot about that. She was part of the first wave for it. Oh, we have another new year. No, that's for Setsubun. That's next month. There we go. Yeah, we'll just use the bunny costume. Vampir Zone gets applied to everybody. So let's get critical damage. She needs critical up. She's not suppressed, unfortunately. The, sh the Santa Claus show's got six episodes on Disney+. Plus. What, what did they even do? <laughs> what did they even do on a Santa Claus show? Well, she knew he's dead, so we can use someone else. Not Dungeon Alley? Okay. Ooh, shit, that's right. We don't really need Laura. We can use Ann Rose. Because that's actually really good for this. Alright, see you later there, Postman. We all, we'll all have more content, obviously, coming your coming all your guys' way. This is just the start of it. It's more or less just me hanging out and giving an update about what we're doing. Oh yeah, I actually got a scythe for uh, the Sugiri. And it makes Evil Strange... The fact it can make Evil Strange do 40% more damage is actually really, really good. <laughs> because I remember when I talked in my video about um, Evil Strange. By the way, everybody should go watch the Felicia review. It's one of my most favorite ones that I made. The Evil, Evil Strange is, um, it has this little buffer zone right there that I can miss. And it's also not very strong. The fact that now it can actually, uh, on the first hit, mark and then now do even more damage with it so she can heal makes it a very strong candidate for um turtling i love it like the fact it just does 20 percent more damage it's great how can i say no i need to find all my magatamas because i need them oh that's right they're trapped on halia We're not going to 23. We're going to stay on like 10 or 11. Because I mean, I always could revive them, but then I'd have to revive them, and that's always, always expensive. And besides, they revive at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, and I'll be at work. Because Time of VR makes for like, nice, fun streaming content, but when you actually sit there and play it by yourself, it's a fucking slog. It's like the- it's the absolute goddamn worst. No, I need to get Rin. That's what I was looking for. Because it, it's so rough, and it's so... Yeah. I'm so glad that I actually have a weapon for her. Santa retires and takes, lets someone take the role of Santa and they're not doing a good job at it. And it's not a girl, it's a single dad and his little daughter. They probably got, uh, what's his face? They probably got Tim Allen for like the first episode and that's it. Shadow Blade is the damage booster. I want particle booster. 
Can't use slaying spree against the robots. No, that would be way too good. Evil Strange sounds like it's named after Evil Strange from Marvel and Multiverse of Madness. Yes. Isn't that great how they have a guy just named Doctor Strange? And they get and they just we're gonna call him um Doctor Strange. Well, who's his rival? Is he like nefarious de facto or whatever? De facto nefarious or whatever. It's like, no, it's just he's just evil strange, because he's literally just you. It's like, okay. Oh fuck off. More skill damage down. Now Felicia's gonna die. <laughs> That's the, that's the best part about this goddamn about Vampire Zone is that everybody can heal off of it. He's there for the entire show? Okay. But see, you, don't, you guys don't need level 81 characters and above to take on this sort of content. We're, we're, we're doing okay at step 11. <laughs> yeah, we try to go beyond anything that's like level 20 something. And it just doesn't work. I mean, I, I could probably make it work at higher levels, but I have to play much more conservatively. There are people who have actually made it all the way to, like, level 100, but it's just more of the same, and, you, like, if you're not, if you're not winning, you're not winning. Where do you guys even go to read comics in the first place? Is that something that's just, like, I could never get into comics because I could just never find a place for that sort of stuff. There you go, Felicia. There you go, Fel there you go guys. Felicia's the answer to your prayers. You c if you actually get Vampiric Zone off. Well, if the AI is actually smart enough to stand in the range of Vampiric Zone, make it work, you're effectively invincible. And of course, Rin herself is obviously one of the strongest characters in the game, in terms of pure strength at least. And Sakura helps. Sakura is just there to do, just to do whatever she does. Eleven thousand healing, even on a down, on a down version of that. Get out of here, Felicia. Kill there, and she didn't need to do it. She needed to heal off of that. <clears throat> Soccer can do her stuff just fine, so Felicia's the one we have to drive with. It's hard to get into comics now. The stories are just bad nowadays, and <laughs> Joker gets pregnant. I heard about that one, so it's uh. That just sounds like a funny what if story. Like I can't. Can you honestly take an Mpreg story seriously? I I can't. That's just something that's like that's so fucking stupid. It's like you have to be like 
you have to be really full of yourself not to see like that's a fucking joke. And if that's actually something people have to take seriously, like I, <laughs> I just can't do it. They're fucking. Whoever wrote that is a fucking joke. Trying to take your gross ass and and Craig fan fiction seriously, like it's not working. I, I I read a lot more manga than I do um than I would a comic. Because the one comic that I actually got interested at one point was uh, Lady Death, and most for the most part, it's because Lady Death's a fucking hot lady. That's what she is. I honestly don't really care about what's going on. I want to see what I want to see what other uh, hot problems she's getting into. You like my videos with Sonic because of the build and all you play the best Sonic music from the best Sonic games. I really like, um, I, I love Sonic. I really do. I want to play, I, we obviously played Forces at one point. We played a bunch of other Sonic games. But it's like, one day we will play, um, oh my god, I can't, I can't remember what his name is. Frontiers, we'll play Frontiers for sure. But I, I, I'm glad you enjoy the music and what we do here. Good, Felicia filled up. You've never seen Lady Death before? It's like, yeah, well, you'll you'll know uh, who she is the moment you see her, because she's pretty unforgettable, I'll say that much. She's like White Storm. She's like White Storm because she's effectively a corpse. What is with this game giving me skill down? Come on. It's trying to challenge me, but it's more or less just pissing me off. Only 300k damage. Did I ever watch Sonic Prime? No, because I, I think Sonic Prime's Netflix only, and I don't have Netflix. And honestly, I don't want to go through the effort of pirating it just yet. Because I don't want to start another show uh, when I'm trying to complete another one, you know? Because I'm on, I'm on my Legacy, I'm on my Legend of the Galactic Heroes kick, and I'm 76 episodes in there. I don't want to stop. Because if I stop, I'm going to forget what happens in the show. At least with Sonic Prime, I can, uh, I know I won't have to worry about a Witcher level complex story, you know? God, 24, 870 is like really bad for this. Joker being pregnant sounds like DC went online, found the worst Joker fanfic out there and said, let's go with it. Let's fucking go with it. You love Lady Death as well because of your dad. Is Lady Death your mom? Can I can I meet your mom? Can I meet your mom and say, wow, good job, lady. <laughs> yeah, my Felicia is not exactly strong enough to take advantage of uh, Vampiric Zone like this. On a very uh, long limit scenario. Yeah, Sonic like Prime is digestible enough. Everybody should go watch Legend of the Galactic Heroes. I cannot say that enough. It is so very beautiful. Probably the, one of the best shows I've ever seen in my entire goddamn life. I 
I still have that tier list open from LD player, and it's like, I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it again. Look at that. Yeah, Sakura, Sakura deserves to be A right now. What show? Leg Legend of the Galactic Heroes. It's a show that premiered from like, it's a show that went from 1988 to 1994. It's uh, it's got some age and it shows it. However, it's one of the most, it's one of the best. I wouldn't say best paced because it's got a kind of a slog at some points. Uh, it's it's that sh it's the show that effectively defines what a space opera is. It's really really fucking good. It's a classic for a reason, but it's also like, well, it, here, here's the thing with it. Here's a really big thing about it. It's a, it's the one of the most, uh, I'm sure everybody understands the concept of uh, active and passive listening. Like if I watch a show in English, I can passive, I can like, if I lose attention, like I get bored at some point, because something, uh, you know, kind of dull moment in the show, I don't have to worry about that. However, when this show has a boring moment and uh, I can't just like look away for a moment and do and like think about something or pick up a piece of pizza, you have to pay attention. This entire show is an exercise in active reading and listening uh, because you can't miss anything. Because you can't miss a lot. Because there's a lot of details that get brought up and like resurrected. But for the most part, that show also deals with the fact of autocracy versus democracy. It's a political show, like 100%. And it's po but it's political in a good way. Like, it's not beating you over the head with stupid shit about, like, oh my god, I, I hate Donald Trump. It's not something like that. It's, it's talking about the merits of both an autocracy and also democratic republics. And it doesn't put them in, like, you know, oh, it's it's us, it's an us versus them mentality. Fuck everything else. Uh, fuck uh, democracy, the way to go. Fuck anything that resembles Hitler. No, you actually get to see the merits of both sides of... The merits and downfalls of democracy and an autocracy. I'm like, wow. And the thing is, that show doesn't actually feel like it's beating me over the head with like, you know, oh my god, a political message. It's like, yes, politics are very much intertwined with how government behaves on both sides of the on both sides of the uh, way politics are. In, that humans have at least uh, portrayed, and they show that so very well. I really like it. Come on. Activate it! Activate it, Felicia! Thank you! Oh! Nice delayed stomp there, asshole. Ruined my assault. My CS assault. Did you know that Hadoken got its name from Legacy of the Galactic Heroes? Really? I find that really hard to believe because I have never seen. I've watched 70 episodes of that show and I've never seen a. didn't do a Hadouken. If they are doing Hadoukens in Legacy of the Galactic Heroes, then man, I'm watching the wrong fucking show. Pretty 
I love Never Democracy escape. Palpatine. I love the Republic Star Wars reference. It, you know, I honestly feel like um, George Lucas watch found some way to actually get like a nice translated version of Legacy of the Galactic Heroes. Because the way this, the prequel movies behave when they talk about democracy and shit like that. Democracy and also the Republic. I'm like, th this guy... This guy watched something political at some point and tries to integrate it but does it in the wrong way. Because Legacy of the, Gal Legacy of the Galactic Heroes takes 110 episodes to fucking do it. Lucas has two hours. The name Hado is from the laser weapons they use from that show. Masher, you're blowing my fucking mind here. I, I never knew that. Because they have, they've obviously talked about laser weaponry before with Ezerlon Fortress and the other fortress that had another one of that. They called it Thor's Hammer. So I guess... What is this game? What is this fucking game, man? Another skill damage down. You want me to play this shit or not? It makes the fight take way longer and it's much more dangerous because of this. Cygnus had 100% the right opinion about like those debuffs. It's like skill damage down, okay. Great, now you just do less damage, the fight's much more dangerous, and you don't fucking work on anything. You just sit there and get your ass in for like a long time. I don't know. I've always I've always pronounced Hadouken like that, like just Hadouken, but it's pronounced. I know it's spelled Hadouken. It's like a, it, it's a regional dialect, you know, upstate New York. <clears throat> Earlier, I talked about the differences to, differences between playable characters again with the skill damage. Seriously. Difference is between playable characters and the boss characters, so Felicia looks like they copy pasted her from the boss into the playable character. Yes, they did. Which is actually very good because uh, a lot of, um, it's actually a very good translation of uh, what you can do as a boss into an actual enemy. Like, you, you can see it, you can do that same thing. So that means, that also probably means that they plan for Felicia to become a playable character from like when she was first introduced because Astaroth being playable you can't do the shit that she does as a boss and it's really it's really fucking annoying And I would like them to copy paste certain portions of what they do as a, uh, what's it called? From a boss into a playable character. Like, uh... When they do that, when they have a what's-her-face, um... Ina. Ina Winchester would be obviously the 100% the perfect match to go with this. Because Ina's boss uh, capabilities like she calls in an airstrike, she does all kinds of stuff like that. Those are probably things that aren't going to get translated directly. Like she's not going to have a, an attack where she sits there for um, for like 8 seconds and uh, takes ungodly amounts of damage. You know, they're probably going to make it faster, something, something in a similar situation to Micah. Oh my god. Damn it. 
Yeah, that's what I get for not paying attention. See, that's the thing with this boss as well. When they're when they get uh, their armor broken, they uh, walk backwards, which is like one of the worst fucking things ever. Well, I shouldn't say damn it, Felicia, because that's all on me. Oh well, since she's gone, we have to reiterate our strategy. These two can handle themselves just fine. As l no, as long as I keep protecting them, they'll be fine. See, I'm not gonna subject Tokiko to this because she's just gonna get fucking buried. Nagi, it's your turn. What are you at? You're at 1515. But all the ones that matter are at 20. Yeah, let's increase defense. She needs it. I somewhat regret not making a video over her. Oh, that's right. We can't use her because Rin's got the goddamn weapon. That is, that is the downfall of shared characters. If you put them in a three-set team, you can't share weapons unless you have two separately upgraded ones. Hmm. Kern, I could do it. But I don't have very good gear for her. Asuka's really dangerous. Because I don't have her... I don't have her built straight for damage. And she has to get really close. Hmm. That's her off. You can sit far enough away from everybody. And I can use the support. Star Wars, even with the prequels, were great. And the prequels could have been better, but it still made sense compared to whatever Disney's doing. I somewhat disagree with that, but at least uh, the prequels feel like an actual Star Wars adventure. Not so much with uh, 7, 8, and 9. The fact that we have 9 Star Wars movies is uh, not exactly the best. Actually, no. We need uh, Misaki Akane. We can't use Yukikaze since she's dead. Take it off of her. Hmm. Well, Murasaki's gone. That means you can use Kaoru. Good. Then we use that. Serpent Blaze. Blocking backwards is like a fighting game. When you're running out of house, all you gotta do is block damn well knowing you die. That's right. Because you're just sitting out there getting chipped. That's right. Let's get, um... That's Sora. I wish Sora was still alive. Sora is one of my favorite characters to use in this. Uh oh, I forgot. There's Astaroth. No, I want to unequip those. I want critical busters because she needs to crit every single goddamn hit in the game. Yeah, I, I, I put my I put all my gems into that one. I got my five five weapon. I, I think the support is like three five. Yeah. I love you, Astaroth. You're so fucking good. With Dark Sun. You are so fucking good. Absolute goddamn mess. Taking chip damage because you get smacked to death like a bag of chips. I don't think I put uh, that on there. The Astaroth gets absolutely fucking hurt from uh, that. Yeah, I have Phoenix Advocate. Okay. Yeah, it's a 
Astro doesn't have problems here. She has problems a lot with the fucking health, that's for sure. I have to be very- yeah, I have to be really- I have to be much, much more careful. Because the melee can just run in. Have I seen the Pokemon racing game? No, I haven't seen the Pokemon racing game. That's actually pretty goddamn big news. And honestly, why did it take them so long to make a Pokemon racing game? That seems like day one shit. It's so perfect. They only got like 20 bajillion mascot characters, they can use those. Thousand damage. Oh my god. What are they doing to the Astroth? What are they doing? Alright, good night there, Masher. We'll see you later. But. It had a decent start with episode 7, 8 and 9 were awful, you know, the Star Wars stories to probably what people say about Solo. I honestly would like them to do, you know, more one-off movies with their universe. Because the extended universe of Star Wars is like, you know, is interesting. Like, what people have actually, like, sat down and done with it is actually really fun and interesting. That's what's actually kept people so interested in Star Wars, besides the fucking merchandise, all these years. And yet the fact that they don't do anything like, you know, trying to make their own world or anything special like that, it's like, why? You're just missing out on like, you know, hitting a new market but this the star wars isn't star wars lives and dies off of its merchandise so i would think they would want to make a nice profitable interesting product so they can make good merchandise because who's buying ray who's buying finn who's buying whatever oscar isaac play has? i don't know anybody who bought him I don't know any kids even know who those characters are anymore. Only, adult, only adults are caring about Star Wars at this point. In fact, like, what's there to care about? Like, this is a good run. They actually stick that out. Well, they were sticking together. Hey, great. I like that. Nice. And I can only play as Pikachu in the racing game? That That doesn't sound very good. What if I want to play as Torkoal? What if I want to play as Pichu? What if I want to play as like Giraffa Rig or something like that in like my D Mario Kart Double Dash car? It just seems like way too much of a missed opportunity to make it only play as Pikachu. It's effectively like Pokemon Channel, but like worse. Honestly, I don't like Pikachu very much as like a Pokemon. Like I understand it's like it's the face of the franchise, but it's like, dude, he ain't got nothing going on. Oh my god. I ain't even touching you, man. See there you go, it's like Half the fun of the kart racer is the roster, and then the other half is the actual racing itself. If it races well, then it can be a good game, minus the characters. But without the characters and their own attributes, it's just like, you know, who cares? That's why there's always memes about people like, who they choose in Mario Kart. Like, Yoshi, you're a big gay fella. 
Toad, you're a tryhard. Mario, you don't know anybody else in the, in, like, the Mario franchise, so you're gonna take that. Uh, Peach, you're, you're the designated girl. It's like, yeah. And they all have character, and they all have attributes that, you know, make them different from each other. If I have a kart racer and I can only play as Pikachu, I don't give a shit about Pikachu. I wanna play as somebody else. Okay, that's great. Thanks for kicking me in the fucking face. Sakura, look at you, Sakura and Rin. You're just surviving on your own because you're really good strong. <laughs> These are really good strong characters. Raptor, why did you call, why did you say it's a kart race game? It's not like kart race games, more like a foot race. It's like, what do you even do at that point? Well, okay, Astaroth died because apparently I've got phantom hits now in this game. That kind of screwed. And I'm running out of characters at least. I don't want to use Andros because she's actually not that good. She may have a lot of healing, but she doesn't hit very hard. If I had her in, well, I don't even have, I don't have Sakura enchanted and she hits like a goddamn truck. Why can't Andros do that? There's, she has like no enchantments, no nothing and anything like that. And she just like rips the head off of anything else. I even have five, five weapons for Andros and she can't even fucking do it. Maybe I could do that. Maybe I could use blue Asagi. In never hallways and trying to buggy. But Solo is the reason Star Wars movies are canceled in the first place. And because of that, Obi-Wan and Boba Fett became shows and not movies. And you like collecting and building Lego Star Wars, but only the ones I want. Uh, well first I need to pick. Uh, who is that? Astaroth. Astaroth has to get those items off of her so she can so I can put those onto Asiago. Oh, I hate seeing her defeated like that. But now I have, now I can use a uh, healing Asagi. That means I have to use blue. Mm, that range, she's now she's critical. Mm, it sucks to be a play blue on your green character. Death Chamber. Where's machine damage up? Oh, Sakura's using that. That's why she's hitting so hard. Mm. How much time do I have left to farm? Well, we're probably gonna go for another about 15 minutes. See how it goes, see what girls die. And, if, and when they do, when they is what happens is when they do it. It's my, it's a, uh, and we'll end there. We're not using ranged to a debuff enemy. Mm. I could go with that. Actually, no. I wish I had more copies of Noah. That's this is such a good supporter. It's like absolutely perfect for this. Kojinka doesn't do anything. That's the one time you take off Kojinka. Kaka. Now we already have New Year's on. Where's that one? There it is. 
There we go. Personally, my only real experience with Star Wars itself is the Lego Star Wars games. That's it for me. It begins and ends there. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's also like, yeah. No, I, I, I watched the, some of the shows when I was a kid, but it's also like... It doesn't really grip me like anybody else does. I don't under... I don't under... It's just like... It's not much a lack of understanding, it's a lack of like... Why do I need to care? What makes me feel compelled to actually just go out there and... Um, want to continue looking more into Star Wars content? Like I would like... Like, I would look into more content for something like uh, Time Ends, or Galactic Heroes, or anything like that. Maybe it's because I don't see the characters as, like, characters. I, I see them more as, like, a... I see them more as, like, a fiscal property than actual, like, people. Who I can get, like, behind their ideas. Because I remember my friend was talking to me about like he watched you know 1978 Star Wars. Um, I actually sat down and watched it and I thought like, what exactly is there in it? Like I don't really. It just doesn't. Work. It's not like, oh, I never saw it as a child. Like, I've seen the movies. It's just like, my parents would take me there because it's like they wanted to spend time with me. And uh, it's not like I don't enjoy the movies themselves. It's just like I don't see it as like the phenomenon that it is. If there was a Star Wars product or like, if there was a Star Wars like thing you could recommend to someone in terms of like if you don't like this you can't you'll probably never really truly enjoy Star Wars in this fashion, what would that be? Yeah, there we go. She got the sword stab right on top of the explosion. Yeah, she's 83 and it's like, she lasts forever. Because I remember also playing a Star Wars Battlefront when I was a kid, but it's like, the fact that it's Star Wars didn't really matter that much to me. I just really enjoyed playing it with my friends. Like if I if like if for you know if I'm going to play the base game which is like start which is a battlefield, it's like I would probably have just fun right there. Did that do nine hundred thousand damage even with like the down. Kind of side works insane. your experiences with the movies, shows, the games, comics, and etc. Your younger brother only likes the shows such as the 2003 Clone Wars, the Bad Batch, and the Mandos. I can respect that. 
I guess when you start young and you actually find something that really clicks with you on it, it uh, really works for you. Because why I like Lego Star Wars is like I enjoy Legos and I enjoy Star Wars. They put them together and it's like, man, it's one of their most, it's Telltale Games. It's Traveler's Tale's most prof profitable franchise. And for good reason, they're very funny. Knights of the Old Republic. See, Knights of the Old Republic is a game I actually have. I have it and its sequel. However, I remember I tried playing it like... Holy shit, I did like... I must have a shitload of damage to that thing. But regardless, like, I have that game. I bought it years ago. And it's like, I tried playing it once and I just could not get into it. Maybe it wasn't the time for me to get into it, you know? Because I got it when I was in like high school, which was like eight years ago. But I never actually got to sit down and watch the entirety of The Clone Wars since it's an episodic series. And it's like if I miss one episode, I'm gonna miss a lot. Which is the most unfortunate part because it's like I hear Clone Wars is very good. Both the 2003 and I think like the advances they made with like the uh, this 3D version. I gotta play the uh, Old Republic on the Xbox or the PC port. It's too buggy to be, play, feel the same. I mean, I have the PC version. I would have to sit there and play it myself. Who knows? Maybe one day I could just sit there and just play it on stream and like talk to you guys with it. Because my because obviously, like I think I said, like right there, it's like my two favorite star, my most memorable Star Wars experiences were with other people. Whether that be my family or we're playing it with my friends. Asagi sta stabbing an explosion is like she killed Michael Bay with his own work. That's how Travis Knight directed Bumblebee because he's a real and true Transformers fan. You know, I feel like I've seen the movie Bumblebee before. Like I actually went into the theaters and saw it, or if that I saw it on TV or something like that. I honestly can't remember. Get out of the way, Asagi. Come on. Sinker. Okay, that was a good hit. When I see a healer for 18,000 damage, I mean to fucking crit. Good job, Asagi. My lovely lady once again takes the victory. But I think that's enough for today. We've done a pretty considerable amount of farming. We got the event done. I made a lot of points. And you know what? It's still even it still ain't even enough to get crystals for it. Not not to can't even get the weekly version for it. Which is unfortunate. Change Rinko back. Gotta give her her best costume. 
Phantom Hunter. There we go. All right. Thank you, everybody, for stopping by. That was a really great time, and I had a lot of fun with it as well. We got the event done. We farmed a lot in time of VR. That was a really nice adventure. And we got to talk about a lot of fun stuff, get to catch up from being away for a while. But I am back. We're going to start doing more again and we've, because uh, the, ho the holidays are over and it's time to hit back to work. Got to hit them fields and start early, you know. Mm, but thank you once again. That was a very fun time. And uh, who knows? Probably next week we'll have another stream and probably lead up to other great content. We'll play a new game. But once again, thank you all for stopping by. Don't forget to like, comment, rate, favorite, and subscribe. And as always... I'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody.